Hello to you. My name is Maria Konjelska and you are watching Poland Daily Culture. And today we have a unique opportunity to talk to Marisa Wimpitska, who is a great granddaughter of Tamara Wimpitska, famous Polish painter and artist. Marisa, thank you very much for talking to us, connecting with us. And where are you right now? Thank you. Thank you for having me. I am in Aspen, Colorado, USA. It's a, it's a ski resort here in Colorado, a fantastic place. Yeah, so we normally wouldn't have this opportunity to talk to you, but of course, for technology, there is such one. And uh, before we, we go to, uh, to your great granddaughter, which is Wimpitska, of course, and uh, I would like to, I probably, all of my viewers would like to know a little bit about, about you, yourself, because as I understand, it is your first interview for Polish TV. It is, it is. Uh, I have been to Poland twice. I've been to uh, Warsaw and Krakow, and I love your country. Um, it, it's funny, both of my grandmothers are Polish, so obviously Tamara and, and Kizet, my grandmother, were Polish, but on my father's side, my grandmother was Polish as well, so I would say I am 50% Polish. Oh wow, great, so great to hear. So it's, it's a combination of two together. How much Polish do you know? No, <laughs> I don't know. I wish I, I, I speak Spanish because I grew up in Argentina. I speak a little French and a little German. I do not know any, any Polish. The only word I know, um, so Tamara only had one daughter, my grandmother Kizet, a way, lovingly way of, call, of uh, calling her, we called her Kija, which I understand means a uh, little kitten or pussycat in, in, in Polish. In Polish, yes, yes. So that's okay. why we called her Kija. Okay, so this one Polish word. Not bad, yeah. but we hope you catch up with a little bit more in the future. Next time, next time, yes. So we, when we're talking already about family and relationships to, to daughter, so uh, that's, that's my first question, basically. What kind of relationship did Tamara had with Kizet, her daughter? Um, well, you know, Tamara was a very, very strong woman, very very powerful and uh, she liked things done her way. You know, they, they really loved each other. Uh, it was, a, I guess, in, in, if you looked at it from the outside, it could be like a love-hate relationship because it was so strong and so symbiotic in a way, I guess. They did adore each other. Um, it was hard for Tamara to show her love physically or with words. Uh, the way she showed love to Kizet was to she painted her in some of the most amazing portraits of Tamara's career. So, and now these uh, amazing paintings are hanging in museums around the world. So that was a way for Tamara to show love to Gizette. I think maybe she wanted uh, approval or more loves, uh, words of love, but that wasn't Tamara's way. And Gizette dedicated her life to Tamara. She was her personal assistant almost all her life. I mean, from when she was young, she would bring uh, five newspapers to Tamara to her bed and her breakfast in bed. And Gizette did, us, did this as a little girl already. And uh, when they moved to the United States, Gizette was her personal assistant. She kept track of all the archives, which we now have, thanks to Gizette. She did all her correspondence. Uh, she wrote all her letters. But it was tumultuous because uh, Tamara was, was very, very strong. And again, she liked things done her own way. I understand. Artists are usually difficult creatures. It happens, unfortunately. <laughs> so, I as I... With, uh, with very um, talented, too, you know. Um, yes, there, there's a funny story. Um, there's many stories, of course. But one of them that can show you how Tamara kind of had to have things her way. You know, Kizet and her husband, my, my grandfather, Foxy, had a house in Houston and where they lived with my mother and, and, and my aunt. And uh, Tamara would come and visit twice a year and spend between a month to three months in Houston. She would rent, uh, she would stay at a beautiful hotel. It's not there anymore, uh, close by in River Oaks. She would come and she would say, no, 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 we're going to redecorate the whole house. And she redecorated at her own style. She wouldn't even ask my grandmother if she liked what she was choosing, the, 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 the new furniture, the colors. She would just do it in her own style. 
without even asking when it wasn't even <laughs> oh wow that that's was, tough that that's shows tough. you you know uh what kind of and Kizet was she knew she just yeah she just I understand she kind of accepted the situation because what else to do I what else is she gonna do <laughs> I understand at least you have like a lot of people would pay a lot of money to have their houses redecorated by Wimpitska so after oh. all it's not the worst scenario I can imagine you have had a chance as a little daughter to meet Tamara would you recall off of those times It was amazing. The first time we met her, she invited us uh, to her villa in Cuernavaca, Mexico. Uh, we were living in Argentina. That's where I grew up. And uh, so she invited us to, to, to meet her there. It was a beautiful home with a lo lovely gardens and a, a swimming pool and a guest quarters. And of course, over there in those days, you know, um, I think uh, living there reminded her of living in, in Poland um, because she was able to have a big house with with um, uh, a maid, several maids, a gardener, a chauffeur. You know, that's unheard of here in the United States, but she could do that in Mexico. And I think in many ways it reminded her of, of growing up in, in Poland and, uh, and, and St. Petersburg as well. So she invited us to go there. I was five years old. And um, this is in, in, the, in the book, the story. So, you know, it's from Argentina. It's a very long trip. It's only, a, it's about almost 24 hours flying between the stops and, and then a car from Mexico City into Cuernavaca. So uh, she sent the chauffeur to come pick us up at the airport and we finally get to Cuernavaca. It's a little door, you know, there's big walls protecting the house and there's a little door and we open the door. And then as we come in, it opens up to this wonderful garden Uh, full of flowers. You could smell the flowers as you walk in. And um, we didn't get to meet her right away. We had to go and clean up and change and uh, put a cute little dress. So finally, at about 5.30, we do get to meet her. And uh, she was a formidable woman. I had never met anybody like her. You know, she was wearing, she used to wear these big uh, berets or hats that she actually designed in her long tunics And of course, her wonderful jewelry. She wore the Danuzio, uh, the, the ring that Danuzio gave her pretty much until the day she died. So she had this beautiful, huge uh, topaz ring, the most wonderful gold necklaces and, uh, and bracelets. And uh, her perfume was, was um, unforgettable, patchouli and uh, flowers. And uh, she had a very husky voice. So she's like, hello, I'm your great grandmother, but you can call me Cherie. So of course we could not. <laughs> That's it fabulous. Or like that, it was Cherie. So we all, Kizet, my mother, and us, we called her Cherie, and um, I knew she was somebody great. It was like meeting a queen. This story gets like even more exciting, and we invite all of you, the audience of Poland Daily, for another episode of our interview with. Marisa Wimpitska. So please stay with us and thank you very much for watching Poland Daily Culture.